Most of us travel the roads every day, in cars, vans, or trucks, driving to and from work, heading out on sales calls, making deliveries, or providing service to customers. As part of the daily grind, driving may seem routine, but the roads can be very dangerous. Each year, accidents claim over a million lives worldwide, almost 40,000 in the U.S. alone, as well as resulting in millions of serious injuries. In fact, motor vehicle crashes are the number one cause of death on the job. This may make the driver's seat the most dangerous place you've ever been. Fortunately, most accidents can be prevented if you approach driving with the proper attitude, good driving skills, and a well-maintained vehicle. Safe driving starts before you even get behind the wheel, by thoroughly inspecting your vehicle before you hit the road. First, make sure you have enough air in your tires. Check the tread on your tires as well. Many tires have built-in wear bars between the treads. When the tread is worn down to these bars, it's time for new tires. You can also check for tire wear with a penny. Insert it between the treads head first. If you can see the top of Abe Lincoln's head, you need a new tire. If you do a lot of wet weather driving, where additional tread is needed to keep you safe, use a quarter and George Washington's head instead. Make sure you have enough fuel as well. If you are driving an electric vehicle, be sure it has a full charge. You won't always have a gas or charging station where you'd like it to be. Today, many cars come with run-flat tires. But if you have a compact or a full-size spare, be sure it is properly inflated and that you have a tire iron and jack. Then make sure that you have a snow brush and ice scraper. Warning indicators such as flares or flashing lights. Jumper cables an emergency blanket or two, a small shovel, and a flashlight on board. Next, you should adjust the vehicle to suit your body, not just for comfort, but for safety as well. Position the seat so that your back has good support, and your feet can easily reach the pedals. Then, adjust your rear and side view mirrors to minimize blind spots, the areas around the vehicle that you can't see without turning your head. Last but not least, put on your seatbelt. A crash at 30 miles per hour without a seatbelt is like falling off a three-story building. Having a seatbelt on doubles your chances of surviving. If you're driving a vehicle that you aren't used to, take some time to familiarize yourself with it. Go for a spin around a parking lot. Try out the steering. Bigger cars and vans make wider turns. See where your blind spots are. Test the brakes. Determine how much room you'll need to stop at various speeds. Remember, larger vehicles with heavier loads will need more stopping distance. You also need to be mentally prepared to operate a motor vehicle. Fatigue and frustration are major causes of accidents. Never begin a trip if you aren't wide awake and alert. If you get tired while driving, take a break to rest and regroup. If your day hasn't been going well, don't let your frustrations carry over to your driving. Pause a minute before you start off to take a deep breath and relax before you hit the road. Lastly, you can't drive safely if you're mentally impaired. More than half of all fatal accidents involve drugs or alcohol. As little as one drink can slow your reflexes and affect your judgment. And even legal drugs can impact your reaction time. So don't drive if you're under the influence of any substance. There are a number of safe driving principles that apply no matter what type of vehicle you're in. You should obey speed limits and traffic signs at all times. They are posted for a reason. 
When you're in traffic, create a safety cushion around your vehicle. This means leaving enough space to maneuver in an emergency. The faster you go, the less time you have to react, and the more space you need to stop. So look at your following distance as well. Watch the vehicle ahead of you. When it passes a landmark, like a tree or telephone pole, count how many seconds it takes you to reach that same point. If it's less than three seconds, slow down and back off. You're too close. Remember, if you're driving a larger, heavier vehicle, you'll need even more room to stop, so adjust your following distance accordingly. Another good safe driving technique is to watch for brake lights several vehicles ahead of you. This will give you an early warning and allow you to brake sooner than you might otherwise. Many fender benders can be avoided this way. You also need to leave plenty of side space as you drive, so stay in the center of your lane and give passing traffic a lot of leeway. To be completely safe, you have to pay attention to the traffic behind you as well, so glance at your mirrors regularly to keep tabs on other vehicles. If someone is tailgating you, slowly reduce your speed and let them pass. You don't want to be rear-ended if you need to make a sudden stop. Traffic signs and the lines on the road indicate when it's legal to pass other vehicles. But it's not just the law, it's a matter of safety too. If the lines are solid, you can't see far enough ahead to spot oncoming traffic. So if the sign says, do not pass, then do not pass. When you are going to pass, remember to look before you leap. Check the road ahead and behind you to make sure there's enough space. Signal your intention to pass before you begin to pull out. Pass quickly. Don't lag in the other driver's blind spot. If you can't see the driver in their side mirror, they can't see you. And don't cut off the vehicle you're passing by jumping back into their lane too soon. Wait until you can see both headlights in your rear view mirror, then signal and change lanes. Driving around other cars can be pretty straightforward, but sometimes there are larger problems that you have to be aware of. Sharing the road with trucks and buses ups the stakes. They're longer, wider, and heavier than you are. Tractor trailers can weigh up to 80,000 pounds. That's 40 times as much as a subcompact car. Never follow a truck or bus too closely. That will make it difficult to see around them, and you won't have enough warning if there's trouble ahead. Adjusting your following distance will give you more time to react to anything they do as well. Because trucks and buses are longer, you'll also need more open road to pass them. And because they're wider, you need to make sure to stay far over in your lane when you do. Large vehicles can create air pressure that can push you out of your lane and into trouble. Trucks and buses have bigger blind spots than cars as well so you don't want to ride beside them for any longer than you have to. When you pass them, you need to do it as quickly as possible. And never cut off a truck or a bus. They need a lot more stopping distance than you do. At 50 miles per hour, a loaded tractor trailer needs at least 300 feet, the length of a football field, to come to a complete stop. If you are driving around a school bus, there are some additional things you need to remember. On a two-lane road, if the bus is stopped with its red lights flashing, you must stop as well, whether you are behind it, approaching it from the front, or on an intersecting road. On three- or four-lane roads, state laws vary, but most require that traffic in all directions still stop, unless there is a median or guardrail dividing the highway in which case oncoming traffic can keep going. If you are driving behind a school bus, it's always smart to allow some additional stopping distance. School buses make stops at locations you might not normally expect, such as railroad crossings and in front of students' houses. 
You should also allow a little extra room when you are stopped behind a school bus in case students or their parents will be crossing the road. And remember, you must wait until the bus's flashing lights go off and any swing arms are retracted before you can start moving again. Even though there are fewer vehicles on the road, more than half of all accidents happen at night. So when the sun starts to go down, turn on your headlights. At dusk, this makes it easier for other drivers to see you. At night, use your high beams as much as possible. You can see farther with them on, which gives you more time to react to any trouble ahead. Only switch to low beams when you're behind other vehicles, facing oncoming traffic, or driving in snow or fog. You'll want to slow down at night as well, so that you don't overdrive your headlights. Even with your high beams on, you can only see so far in the dark. If you drive too fast, you won't have enough reaction time to avoid any problems you may encounter. Adverse weather conditions can dramatically affect how you should drive. Before you venture out into the elements, go to your radio, TV, or the Internet to get a read on road conditions. You may need to allow yourself extra time or use roads that are more well-traveled than your normal routes. It's important to be able to both see and be seen in bad weather. When preparing to drive in snow, maximize your visibility by clearing off your windows, headlights, taillights, and turn signal lights. You'll also want to clean snow and ice off of your roof, trunk, and hood. If it were to break loose on the road, it could blind you or the drivers behind you. The roads can invariably be slippery in wet and snowy weather, so you'll need to reduce your speed and increase your following distance. You should also apply your brakes sooner when approaching a stop. Press down slowly and gradually. Slow down before turns and curves, not during. And avoid puddles and icy patches whenever possible. The friction between your tires and the road surface is what normally keeps you on course. It's what helps to propel you forward, allows you to steer, and enables you to stop. If you don't have this friction, you can't control your vehicle. Skidding occurs when one or more wheels momentarily lose friction with the road. When this happens, your momentum takes over and the vehicle begins to spin. Don't slam on the brakes. This will eliminate whatever friction and control you have left. Instead, ease your foot off the gas pedal. Compensate for the spinning motion by steering in the direction of the skid. If the back of the vehicle is skidding to the right, then steer to the right. If the car then skids to the left, steer to the left. When the snow and ice melt, you're still not out of the woods. Hydroplaning occurs when water lifts your tires completely off the road surface. Remember, when you lose friction, you lose control. Ordinarily, your tire treads channel water out of the way, but the faster you go, the more water you need to disperse each second. Then even small puddles can overpower the treads and cause hydroplaning, so you should still drive more slowly even though things are melting, and in heavy rain as well. As with snow and ice, with hydroplaning you do not want to brake. Instead, ease your foot off the gas pedal. As you slow down, your wheels will reconnect with the road's surface, returning control of your vehicle to you. Whatever the weather and road conditions are, you need to be 100% focused on your driving. Even in the best of circumstances, there's a lot going on that you have to pay attention to. In recent years, distracted driving has become a major issue for lawmakers, as well as for companies whose employees drive while on the job. Traffic safety experts tell us that there are three types of distractions. Visual, taking your eyes off the road. Manual, taking your hands off the wheel. 
and cognitive, taking your mind off what you're doing. Nowadays, there are all too many things that can cause us to become distracted, such as talking on a cell phone, texting, eating or drinking, talking to passengers, particularly children, using a navigation system or reading a map, and changing the radio station or your playlist. Cell phones in particular have become such a serious problem that almost all states have banned the use of handheld phones while driving. Most states also ban texting, and nationally, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration prohibits commercial vehicle drivers from texting wherever they're driving. Many companies are instituting their own bans on the use of cell phones while on company business as well. You can combat distracted driving yourself in a number of ways. Set your car radio or preload your playlists before you start your journey. Make sure everyone is buckled up and that children have everything that they need before you leave. Set up your navigation system ahead of time. Turn off your cell phone while you're on the road. If you're expecting an important call, leave the phone on, but don't answer it when it rings. Pull over at the next safe location and check your voicemail. And get off the road to make calls, text or grab a bite to eat. Most of all, take your time and be patient. Nothing is so important that you should risk your and others' lives to do it now. People always seem to be in a hurry when they're in their car. As a result, a phenomenon that has become more prominent in recent years is road rage. With the volume of traffic on most roads, getting somewhere quickly can be nearly impossible. This often leads to frustration, sometimes on our part, sometimes on the part of drivers with whom we share the road. Couple this with the aggressive driving styles that more and more people seem to have adopted, and too many situations turn into road rage. People yelling at one another, using obscene gestures, and often wielding their vehicles like weapons. We all need to know how to deal with road rage on two fronts, within ourselves and on the part of other drivers. It starts with avoiding any aggressive driving of our own. Here are some helpful hints. Plan ahead and allow enough time for delays should they occur. Give your driving your full attention. Don't take your frustrations out on other drivers. Remember that driving isn't a contest. And realize that you can't control the actions of the drivers around you. You can only control the way you react to them. If you are the victim of road rage, there are also some things you should remember. The other driver could have made an honest mistake, so give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't retaliate. It's not worth risking your life for. And always be polite and courteous, even when other drivers aren't. Most importantly, never make eye contact with an angry driver. Often a challenging look from you will just escalate the situation. If another driver is harassing you, try to get away from them as quickly as possible. Leave the road you're on and take an alternate route. If they follow you, drive to the nearest police station, let the officer on duty know what is going on, and file a report. Even under normal conditions, there are a number of driving emergencies that can arise. One of the most serious involves a blowout. A blowout is a rapid loss of air from a tire. If a tire goes flat while you're driving, the vehicle will be pulled to that side by the tire's increased friction with the road. Don't hit the brakes. The vehicle will just pull to the side more violently. Accelerate instead. This will actually give you more control. Keep a firm grip on the wheel and compensate for the pull by steering in the other direction. 
When you regain control, slow down and turn on your flashers. Then drive to a safe level area to fix your flat. Accidents can happen to even the safest drivers. If you're involved in one, stay calm and keep your head. Don't move your vehicle unless it's creating an immediate hazard. Turn off the engine and turn on your flashers. Check to see if everyone is okay. Don't move anyone who is injured unless their life is at risk. You could do more harm than good. Never leave the scene of an accident. Call the police or have a passerby go for help. Be ready with your driver's license, vehicle registration, and proof of insurance. They should always be with you. It's the law in virtually every state. You'll need to exchange this information with the other driver and show it to the police. Get the name, address, and telephone number of anyone who witnessed the accident. Make a note of the responding police officer's name, badge number, and department and be sure to get a copy of the police report. If the accident happened while you were working or in a company vehicle, report it to your supervisor immediately. Driving can be dangerous, but most accidents can be prevented. Let's review. Familiarize yourself with your vehicle before you drive. Keep your eyes and mind on the road. Always maintain a safety cushion around your vehicle. Pass with care. Use your headlights from dusk to dawn, including the high beams. Proceed with caution in inclement weather. Stay calm. Don't take out your frustrations on other drivers. And know what to do in case of an accident or other emergency. Like every other part of your life, driving comes with responsibility. So make sure that you know how to drive in all conditions, and you'll arrive home safely at the end of every day.